Well, Fred and I have decided to do a little something on photography you can do indoors because uh, look at Texas and uh, a lot look of Look at a lot of the area. United States yeah, right now. United People States are kind of stuck inside. Can't go outside, but you might still don't want to abandon your cameras or photography. So a couple things that you can do indoors and give you a warning, these can be addictive. <laughs> so it could be a habit for me. So the first one I thought we would do is oil and water. Oil and water don't mix, but they can make some interesting uh, photography. So what you need to do is uh, gather up a, a few items. We're going to show you our particular setup, and um, you can do something very, very, very similar to this. First off, I've been using a clear glass bowl. Um, you could use maybe a cookie sheet. I like to use something that's small, maybe even uh, a glass would work because you want to keep uh, everything into an area closer to the lens. You don't want to be, if you have like a baking sheet that's clear, that doesn't work out too well because it spreads out too much. So, Fred? like a Petri dish would work, or a, yeah, yeah, or anything shallow glass bowl. Shell, or anything yeah, like that? I'm just using a, a glass bowl. We're gonna put a little water in there, right. and uh, what else, Fred? You can uh, name another item on here. Well, you, of course, you want to bring along food coloring yeah. and just raid the kitchen shelves and see what you've got for it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's, that's, what that's, what you have. That's optional. You can mix and match with those. You can go crazy. You can go psychedelic. Whatever you want to do with it. By the it. way, the food coloring is only going to color the water. It's not going to right. color because the oil is going to reject that. And oil is going to tend to float away from it or on top of it. And you need oil. <laughs> you need oil. Well, I'm using canola oil. Any kind of oil. Butter or anything like that. Well... Do you think, you mean melted butter? Yeah, anything that's oil-based, yeah, that would work. I guess motor oil would work, too. Well, that's a little dark. Yeah. I don't know. Motor yeah. oil would, if anybody decides to try that, let us know. I have Ex a feeling it's going to be a very light viscosity. There's no rules on this. You could use anything, but you just want a little bit of it. So we're we talking droppers full? or Yeah, okay. just it's something small. And um, you want some kind of a lighting source. Preferably, you and the reason I'm using clear glass is because you want to light this from you know underneath slightly or uh, from the side, not from the top. Uh, what else we got in there, Fred? There. Well, I, you know, you've got uh, bottles, Some, syringes, uh, yeah, yeah, ways so. to be able to add to, uh, or or I guess you can uh, have uh, toothpicks in there to mix it around or, well, or swirl it. Or I, I do have a toothpick. And the reason for the toothpick is because this is difficult to focus. So what I would recommend doing is floating oh. the toothpick on the and water. focus on that. Focus the toothpick, then lock the focus in. And we'll show that when we get in there. But yeah, a toothpick. There you you could also add, uh, I guess, the oil in with the toothpick as well. It can serve two purposes. Well, it's, it seemed to me that if you've got oil and, and water with uh, food coloring in it, there's want to be you want to have ways to be able to kind of manipulate that. Yes. Swirl yeah, it, yeah. do different things of that you nature. Get your finger and you're going to get your finger all well, covered. Well, <laughs> you don't want to use your shutter finger. No. <laughs> <laughs> get that all over your camera. And I'm using a clear glass table. You don't have to do that, but you can put um, things underneath uh, magazines or color gels, anything in order to give it some interesting uh, colors, which is going to be out of focus and give it swirls. Also, even colored gels to put over the light. So why don't we go ahead and uh, set up and um, actually well, show let's you. Do Just it. do it in practice. Let's, let's do it. actually show you. Great. All right, so here's our setup. It, it's actually pretty simple. Um, that's one of the nice things about this. It's, uh, so why don't we go ahead and I'm going to stand up here. Come around there. So we're going to put a little bit of water in the bowl here. That should do it. I'm going to float the toothpick on there. So you can get your focus. Make sure it's in focus. And it's in focus. So rescue the toothpick. All right, now we're going to get a little oil. I feel like I'm going to give a uh, vaccination here. No, 
don't need much. Just a little bit in there, just to do a little bit more just to get it started. And I'm going to give you the light. Now I'm going to use a flashlight for the lighting. This is an LED flashlight. There we go. Okay, and I'll let you control the light. Yeah. Can I make the filters? Ooh, I got oil on there. No, we're, let's do it light without the filters at first. I'm just going to put them over with me here. That's cool. So I can be ready. Here, focus looks good. All right, so go ahead and apply some light here. And I would light it more from this side. It's a little too much. I'll tell you when, raise it up a bit. Yeah, a bit higher. I'm just not seeing it well. It needs to skim right across the oil. This is why the glass is so important. Yeah, we're still not getting the... Or maybe our oil floated away. That's what happened. Even with this, the uh, oil... I think I need more oil. Got lots of oil this time. Okay, now let's see what we got here. All right, that's starting to be, but I think the flashlight needs to raise up a bit more, more skimmed across. All right, it's been a while since we last did this, so what I had forgotten and what we uh, had discovered again is you want to light the background, not the oil and the water. So make sure that you, and that's another reason you need something with a uh, clear bottom in order to see down to whatever you put in the background. You can use magazines, you can use gels down there. Uh, I used a uh, colored towel and light that and um, that will be what you want to expose for. So the next thing we're going to do, this is a two-parter, is we're going to do some smoking. We're going to do some smoke photography. So why don't we go take this down and go set up and do the smoke. Do some smoke. Okay. Okay, okay well now we've moved inside and this is our smoke setup. This is an incense stick, which you can do whatever you need to do to uh, hold it up. We got a black background. You can use a colored background. Um, point is, you want it to be something dark because if it's light, you're not going to see the smoke. And of course, we uh, had discovered that on the oil and water, it is best to light the background and not the actual water and oil, which I knew and forgot about. Um, in this case, we want to side light the smoke. And again, you can use colored gels. Uh, you can also doctor this up later in Lightroom or Photoshop. So, Fred, do you want to go ahead and uh, light up our incense stick? This also make the house smell nice or stink it up real good. All right. That's not enough here. Let's get that. So we're going to try to get our as much light off as there we go. 
much as possible. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and do some smoke Whoa. photography. As okay. I pull the cables. Or okay. So one of the things we want to do here is make sure that the background goes black so you might have to use exposure compensation because of the white smoke. But boy, there we've got some cool looking stuff already there. Make sure you focus on the smoke. Double check your exposure. Oh, that's kind of cool. We find that Fred is uh, using his hand a little bit to give it a little bit of a character. You want to, otherwise the smoke would just go straight up in the air and it's just not that interesting looking. Yeah, cool. And then we can use some colored gels on there too, so... That's a uh, blue you're using now, right? Mm-hmm. And I just lost it. <laughs> Fred's losing it. Then you want to side light the smoke, not the background, unlike the water and oil. Here we go. And this is one of those things that you have to do um, indoors because outdoors you have too much, too much wind. And oh, there we go. <laughs> and these are fun to. Why don't you put a red on there? You got a red? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah, the red on here. Oh, the red. That's cool. I like that. Let's see if we can get on this one. Oh, that's. I love that. And again, Fred and I could be here all day doing this. Another thing I want to do say you could do is I'm going to take the camera I've got it on landscape I'm going to put it on portrait mode don't hesitate because of the smoke going up put your camera in uh, portrait mode and try that as well I'll give you a little more smoke there It looks like I'm waving at my friend there, waving at the smoke. <laughs> hey, smoke! A little bit of the incense stick too much there. Move up a little bit. There we go. Any suggestions from a lighting standpoint? <laughs> we'll call it the smoke gaffer. There you go. Okay. There you go. Very light red. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah. That's is this the, smoky uh, in here? Yeah, it's a little smoky in here. <laughs> this is one of those things that... Uh, you can it, do it all day, this is, all night. I mean... Yeah, Dick did, like I said, 
it's habit forming. And I'll be honest, <laughs> probably does, this is more so than, than doing the oil and water. Yeah, I think which so. oil and water is, is, is cool. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of an artistic thing. With this, you're just doing everything you can to disrupt the, the plume of smoke and get some cool looking images from again, what how it I was doing, you want to we're, get a little bit having of fun. Um, a little, little movement in the smoke, so I just use my fingers there right. to give it a little bit of Or uh, you're standing off going, going. Yeah, a little turbulence to get there and get this. Otherwise, the smoke just goes straight up the side. You can sing to it, I guess, if you wanted to, yeah, like you sing to plants. Anyway, uh, you can bring this into you Photoshop or your favorite uh, editing program, and you can manipulate it. You can reverse it. So you have a, the white background, the smoke would be black right. or gray. And then we were using a couple of flashlights. Flash lights, Some of them, yeah. we, we were mixing filters with non-filtered yeah. light. It was just, experiment. You know, a lot Again, of fun. Again, there's no rules. Use your imagination yeah. and uh, don't just record. Now, again, on the just going to point out real quick, light, you want to light up. And I found out that if you let the smoke, let me grab one of those flashlights, kind of do it down on this way like this because that would light up the column of smoke a little bit better. And you could add something. We were hand-holding it. You could probably mount something in there sure. if you wanted to. So If you've got one of those uh, lights that do mount on your stand, those, those lights small light, lights. Yeah, any of those would do work, right. would work any great. Of those. So. Because now, on that one, you would have to rig your filtering yes. if you wanted to use color. Yep. But, you know, you could but do the, a lot of course, of there's things. a little uh, LED lights. A lot of them come with yeah, filter sets. There's so ones that do colors. Different color filters. But you can also add the color, color filters in your editing program as well. So. Sure, you could do that after the fact. Play around with um, it. Just It's something that can be a lot of fun. Both of them can. If you're indoors and don't think you're going to be going out very much, yep. go for it. Yep. Have fun. Uh, hopefully not make too much of a mess with the oil. And Oh, and be sure to share the results with us. Oh, yeah. yeah we'd like to see it.